I built the budget Skylake workstation built off a, a HP Z6 G4. I have a link to it here on the blog post. And I bought mine for around $200 bare bones. They, ac they accidentally sent it to me with a uh, this Xeon Silver 4108 and 16GB CPU RAM and a 500GB SSD. Doesn't really matter. I didn't really end up using... I, I did end up using the CPU because it was already in there. I had to, to re repaste it. Um, and then the 256GB of DRAM uh, I used... Since this this I have the single CPU model, so you, you need four DIMMs of 64 gigabytes. You can just kind of look in here and type in uh, 64 gigabyte uh, DDR4 ECC. And uh, the, what I found was some 2400 sticks um, for, yeah, 60, $73 per stick. That's not bad. I found it for around a dollar a gigabyte. So total system cost, um, including DRAM and the uh, workstation was around $500. And then I, I have a, um, a 3070 that I had laying around that I think I got off Craigslist for $350. So now we're up to about $850. So this is uh, a mid-range build, but you could certainly build it cheaper. Ideally, ideally you have an extra spare NVIDIA GPU laying around for, for one of these. But, uh, you know, I'll go through and explain kind of why I like this build versus, um, you know, one of the older Broadwell builds. This one has some nice features. It's got... Uh, it's got M.2 support for NVMEs. It's it's uh, you know a little bit more modern architecture. Uh, you it'll, you'll be able to upgrade the CPU in the future. So uh, yeah, it's got a little bit more flexibility than, than one of the older Broadwell systems. So this is how the system came from eBay. It had two eight gigabyte DIMM slots. It had a five twelve gigabyte SSD, and this FirePro uh, actually had two of these little W twenty one hundred GPUs in there. So I thought it was a bare bones CPU, so I didn't think it had a CPU in there, which is, this is me surprised uh, that there's a CPU in there. It turned out to be, have absolutely abysmal thermal paste on there. So I had to repaste it and pop it back in. Uh, and then the install process was pretty easy. You just throw the 3070 in there, uh, had the eight pin adapter to the new adapter for the 33 series. Um, so pop, pop that in there. And then I did install two M.2s. These are just SK Hynix 960 gigabyte M.2s that are $60 each on eBay. These are just kind of the same ones that like Microsoft or something wouldn't use. I just had these laying around. So it does support 110 millimeter M.2, which is very nice. You can put an enterprise drive in there, which, which I also like. If you want to use the Bladebit CUDA Alpha for Windows, you can download it from downloads.chia.net slash Bladebit. And you'll just see this Bladebit CUDA Windows EXE here, this Alpha 3. This is what we're going to use. And uh, the final version is going to be faster. It's going to be as fast as Linux. Uh, right now, it's a little bit slower than Linux, but it does work. So if, if folks are in Windows and need to do some plotting and they already have 256 gigabytes of RAM and an NVIDIA GPU, you can go ahead and use the Bladebit CUDA Alpha. You'll give it a dash F for farmer key and a dash C for contract address, just as you always do. And then you can do dash dash compress. So we're using C3 uh, here, so it won't take very much CPU to decompress. N0 is going to just plot indefinitely. And we're going to use CUDA plot uh, is the, the name of the, of, we're using CUDA plot as opposed to RAM plot or disk plot. And then we're going to put it in D slash plots. So we're going to run this here and kick this off and let this run for a minute. And what's going to happen is it will create plots here in this D plots folder. I already have a couple plots here sitting there. Uh, we're going to use this other tool called ship plot, which basically you can find, uh, on, I will paste the link, a Keybase user developed this tool to use in Windows to be able to copy files. Uh, so it basically monitors a folder for any new plots. In this case, we're going to be monitoring the plot folder, this staging paths, and it's going to copy them to as many destination drives as you, as you want. So the idea is that you just basically plot indefinitely to the, the plot folder. And then you're gonna run this command and we're gonna hit enter here. And it's going to basically automatically start moving plots to from D to E and F, uh, basically on our script. And so what's happening, you can see here now it's reading off this, uh, this disk here, disk D, reading and then writing to disk one and disk zero here. You can see that these are just locally attached hard drives over SATA, so it'll be writing about 200 megabytes a second. So you're like, these are like eight terabyte drives. So uh, that's it. Um, 
you can see these are just going to keep running and moving the files in the background and then uh, we'll just create some compressed plots and then move on to the farming. So we are back and we are synced on our full node. We are creating plots at about 360 seconds right now while the full node is running. Um, again, the Linux time would be about half of this right now, so expect the times to get better, but this is plenty fast enough for us to kind of max out the, the two drives that we're copying. This nice little script here is running in the background and just copying our plot files over to our destination drives. You can see here the full node is connected and we are farming 62 plots. These are compressed plots, 84 GIB. These are C3s. And you can see the CPU. Um, this is a extremely inexpensive CPU, right? This is a $20 Xeon Silver 8 core 4108. You can get these $20 on, on eBay. So not a tremendously high-end CPU, but it is you know keeping up well. Plotting so far, it's, uh, it's farming away. Um, but yeah, with that, uh, yeah, this is just a quick little test for the compressed plotting on Windows. You can see that the it does work just as it expect, just as irregular regular farming does, except the plots are smaller and you're getting more rewards. So uh, I suspect most people will want to replot for compressed plots. I know, again, it's challenging right now with the memory being 256 gigabytes. I, we we've heard pretty clearly that people want you know lower memory support, so we we are working on that. Uh, 128 gigabytes with SSD offload will be the next next version that that comes out. So um, yeah, with that, thanks.